Hi, I'm Kimberly Jensen, and I'm excited today to introduce an actor that I've worked with years ago. I'm very proud of her. She's done a lot of incredible things in her acting, and she's gone on to star in projects for film and TV. Her name is Joy Tanner. We're going to learn more about her today. And so I welcome Joy. Joy, come, come in here. <laughs> It's so good to be in the Zoom room with or this room with you today. I'm thrilled to be here and I'm so happy so happy to see you after all these years. It's been so long. I want to tell you a quick story that I'll never ever 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 forget because you worked with me back in I think the mid 2000s. And yes. in there, I don't remember the exact years. But I remember an actress. I remember you did a piece and it was really 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 profound, inspiring. I remember the class just being like, oh my God, what did I just see? And I remember an actress, I don't know if you remember this, coming up and you were sitting in your chair and she went on her knees to you, looked up at you and said, I want to be as great as you. And I'll never forget that moment because it doesn't happen often. Everybody's so kind of, um, you know, it was so generous of her to do that. But at the same time, it was true there's a there's a gift you have that is so special and so unique and so you're just so much fun to watch so I just wanted to put that out there do you remember that moment I uh, I hadn't remembered it uh, until you reminded me just now and um, I'm, I'm actually really I'm actually really overwhelmed <laughs> so uh, thank you you know we, we work so hard and it's not um, we don't work to be validated, but when when we are validated, it just helps to uh, shore up all of the challenges that we face as as actors trying to get the work and remembering that it's not about the the pro it's a, it's about the process, not the end results. So, absolutely, anyway, thank you. I ha I have a saying in the book: the process is the product, and when you stay in the process, the connection happens. Well, that's the most important thing when you're acting. It is about the connection. It is about, you, you know, the active listening. It's about what are you, um, what are you engaging with that the other person is, is, is offering to you. So uh, I think for me, listening. yeah, it is, it is. And you, you, um, you were always very gentle about it. And I think what I so enjoyed, uh, working with you, if I may throw the compliment back to you, is that your process is so heart-based and um, I, I don't wanna say it's gentle is the wrong word, but there is a nurturing um, and, and an ability that you have to give permission to your students to really um, acknowledge and appreciate their own uniqueness and what they bring to the table and 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 to allow that to to thrive and blossom um and and of course i mean the serious the the logistics of what a teacher does you know the 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 direction and the strategy and the the tools but i think what sets you apart is really this um you love actors and you love what you do and there is this this warmth that you engage your students with that enables them, I think, to take chances and risks that they would not normally uh, allow themselves to do. What do you think is the basis, just for fun, before we even get to your career, which we should talk about soon, is the basis of what it takes to be a great actor? Oh, God. I, I I've been in this business for 30 years and I'm still I'm still trying to refine what that is. Um, I think there are there are a lot of elements. Uh, there's no one thing that makes a great actor. Uh, but I do think it is the ability to accept your own unique perspective and how you uh, what your work, your own unique perspective, your own special sauce of who you are, um, and not trying to um, muscle muscle that into any particular container. Uh, we talked about listening. I think listening is is really key. Um, 
and you know, I'm guilty of this. I'm ready for my next, my next line. I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating like, so really sitting back that, that element of a sense of ease and relaxation. Uh, I, I had heard, um, an interview, uh, with Ian McCullen on Dick Cavett, like from a long, long time ago, but, uh, just recently on a YouTube clip. And he really said, you know, there are different mediums, theatrical mediums, whether you're on stage, whether you are on television or whether you're on film. But as long as the actor is relaxed, you, you become that vehicle to allow that creativity to flow much more freely. Um, and as Sanford Meisner says, you know, you, you're living within those imaginary confines. Um, of the imaginary circumstances, living truthfully. And, and I think you can only do that. And this is something that I continually strive for and that's to, to be relaxed. Even if, you're, even if you're playing something where there's a lot of tension and, and heightened, um, a heightened state, you still have to have that, that flexibility and that mutability in your body and in your, in your mind and in your heart so that, so that things flow. Of all the tools, and I know you learned some tools from me, but of all the tools that you've worked, what stands out that you, um, now we're standing on listening, what stands out besides listening for you? What do you like to use a lot? What's your objective? What do you want? What is it, what is it that you want? Uh, that, I think that's the most important thing. An objective will change based on what the other individual is giving you. And you can map out, you know, your actions, you know, the strategies, the tactics that you're going to take to, to arrive at that objective. But I think with really great writing, objective is not always met. And so how are you, um, well, and again, something that you always brought in was this element of play, right? You have to have this element of play and, and, and um, again, flexibility to be able to, to go towards that objective. I, th I think that's um, key. Oh, gosh, yeah. And then there's always the obstacle. Now, when you have the obstacle course, show up yes. in a scene... Where do, you, where do you draw the obstacle from? Do you draw it from the script or do you also draw it from who you're playing against? So I think initially when you're breaking the script down, it's you draw it from the script itself. It's written there. Uh, but the wonderful part of acting is that you don't know what your playmate is going to be uh, um, offering as that obstacle. And that's the surprising part. That's the magical part. So when, when you don't know what's going to, you know, it's like a, a great game of tennis. You don't know what's going to be thrown at you. You've got to be on your toes. That's that, that truly is where the magic happens. Um, and that again, engages the act of listening, whether it's not, and it's not just listening with your ear, it's listening with your entire instrument. So that's in the book, by the way, my book acting with impact. I, I don't know. Have you got a chance to read the book? Oh my God! It was what? I, yes, ages ago when when I took classes with you, and it's in my my um, my bookshelf with all of the acting teachers: you know, Hoggins, Eisner, Kimberly nice, Jensen. <laughs> yes, yes. No, uh, you're a great teacher. So, and I always believe the great the right teacher comes along in the right moment. And and you, oh my God, you were right there when I needed it. So I, I was always so grateful and and cherish uh, cherish what you brought to my toolbox. So, out of the, um, if you can remember, because it, it was many many years ago. What stuff for you in my class that you got? after all of these years? Oh, it's, it's just, everything so settles into the, into your, into your, uh, into your being. I think, I think allowing yourself to take risks, uh, uh, trusting that it's there for you to take risks. Um, I think, I, I think for, um, for new students, you always offered, and we we touched upon it, um, objective and obstacle, right? That that script analysis really is, um, it's your map 
you can't, you know, you can't live without that. Uh, but again, that that um, the ability to play with with your partner. I'm. I should have. I should have gone through the book and went mental notes. <laughs> I'm no such worries. a terrible interviewee. I'm so sorry. No, you're perfect. Oh. You're, perfect. you're really, really perfect. I want to talk about your acting career. Tell me some of your highlights. Like what stands out for you oh, that was maybe the most courageous thing you did in your acting, since we're talking about, in a way we're talking about fearlessness, taking risks. What what stands out for you as one of the most daring or most courageous things you've done in your work? Um, I think there was, there was a project that I did a, a long time ago. Uh, John Woo had a television show called Once a Thief. And I had an opportunity to uh, play a character that was based on, um, uh, Clockwork Orange and uh, Malcolm McDowell's character, um, who you know, which was just like uh, this wonderfully insane, um, very um, reprehensible uh, character, and and allowing uh, that probably was the most fun because it was physically we were allowed to take uh, choi uh, chances. Um, we were given a lot of breadth to. Um, to sort of go to the edge emotionally and creatively, but uh, still maintaining that sort of madness um, in a grounded place so that it really didn't become a caricature. Well, I, I hope it didn't, I mean, but I don't know, maybe it became a caricature, <laughs> but uh, I, I think, okay, well, I, I just, I think I had, um, I had so much fun with that role because it was so outrageous. I think, I think the most challenging roles are the roles that are the most, for me personally, because I am physically kinetic, are the most still and probably the most straight. I, you know, I tend to play a lot of mother roles. I tend to play uh, or had played a lot of sort of quirky roles. Um, I'm doing something currently that I can't really talk about. Maybe you'll bring me back when, when it, when it airs and I can talk more about it, but it's, this character is uh, really fascinating in that um, she is uh, a, a, an 18, 17, 18 year old girl stuck in, in you know, a middle aged body. Um, and, and so that creates a lot of tension. And um, I think currently that's this is probably the most interesting role that I've done in a long time. Um, and then also that speaks to the fact that, you know, middle-aged actors, you know, there's, there's less work. So this has actually been a real gift for me, this, this particular That's role. Wonderful. Yeah. Tell me, what are you most proud of? What work did you do that you go, gosh, I'm so proud and happy that I was part of that production. So this is, after I did Life with Derek, which was a wonderful, uh, wonderful family show. Um, it was on the Family Channel here in Canada and, and on Disney uh, throughout the world. I, um, I was asked to audition for a series called Degrassi, The Next Generation. And I remember thinking, uh, I was hesitant and ambivalent about auditioning for it. And um, mostly because it was such a, a huge part of the sort of teenage television vernacular. It, it really sat in a particular genre and I thought, oh, do I really want to do this? I, I'd rather be um, stretched or challenged in a, in a different way. I'm, oh great, I'm playing another mom. It, that, I think that was kind of the, the inner dialogue that I had. Um, and it turned out to be one of the um, most extraordinary experiences for a couple of reasons. First of all, the cast and the crew were just so wonderful and so delightful to, to um, be a part of that family. But the character that I played uh, was sort of a very high powered, um, um, very high powered New York City, um, elegant individual whose daughter, um, came out uh struggled with her coming out of her set with her sexuality and <clears throat> we really um the writers handled that material uh so gracefully uh so elegantly um and really empathetically and i think 
it was only after we finished filming that I realized the impact that this particular storyline had. I, I had individuals, young people coming out to me um, because they were, it's, it, it's, it's going to make me cry. It's heartbreaking because they were afraid to come out to their parents um, because they, they were worried about the implications. They wanted to know that they were okay. Um, and I think for me, that was the greatest um, that I was able in, in some small way to say, you know what, y you are a beautiful human being and it doesn't matter what your sexuality or your orientation is. Y you belong here in this world um, and, and you're validated. Y you belong here. And so for me, I think that was um, the most surprising um, the most surprising and, and the most lovely uh, element of my acting career. Wow. It wasn't about me, you know, it, because it wasn't about me. It was about these other people, these, the, you know, these, these wonderful individuals who were brave and vulnerable and, and, and reaching out to say, you know, the, this storyline really, um, either saved my life or allowed me to feel comfortable in, in the skin and within who I am as an individual. That's the most brilliant part of, of what art can do. So wonderful. Now you have a huge influence. That's so beautiful, by the way. Um, you have a big influence in the theater. You do the, a lot of theater, don't you? As I recall. Uh, um, I, I did. I, I would say that, um, the theater that I've done, I started off in theater. Uh, my career took um, a, a bit of a turn. I ended up in film and television. Uh, and I mean, let's face it, that's where the money is. Uh, my training was in theater. I studied at the British American Drama Academy initially um, and worked with uh, some other really amazing teachers there. Uh, and I thought that I was going to be doing, you know, Stratford or... Um, uh, you know, I thought I was going to be doing Shakespearean work, period work, um, and I didn't. I ended up doing film and television. I came back to it uh, in a very roundabout way, primarily in uh, independent theater, uh, the independent theater scene here in Toronto, which is, <clears throat> well, it was, it's not right now, but incredibly vibrant and gritty and um, offered me the opportunity to, again, take chances and, and to play you know, I, I, I didn't play the canon and the, the roles that, you know, you want to play, but I got to play some really great uh, parts. And in fact, I was supposed to play Titania in A Midsummer Night's Dream with the St. Lawrence Shakespeare Company this past summer, and it has been pushed to uh, the next season. So fingers crossed that uh, we'll be able to do that. So yeah, theater is wonderful. There's, um, it scares me because you don't have uh, um, the fallback of saying, oh, take two. Oh, I screwed up my line. Shh. Shoot, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta take this back. Like you are naked, emotionally naked. And you know, you're tight rope walking without a net and uh, anything can happen. And there's more engagement from the audience, which I think elevates that, that atmosphere of um, electricity. And that's what makes theater so much fun. How do you, and I'm, speaking of all of that, I'm just gonna curious to know, how do you deal with your fear? How do you overcome fear? You lean into it. <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, I, 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 you know, the, the options are, you know, a breakdown and those are no fun. I, you know, I've not had a breakdown, but I mean, you know, you have your moments where you're like, Ah, I'm feeling very frenetic and, and, you know, it's, it's that energy that you need to find, um, you know, ways to express it. But I think, I think really the best way to do it is to actually lean into it and, and, and face it head on and say, okay, you know, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? I forget my lines. Well, there could be some interesting things that happen out of that. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, Yeah. I think that's, <clears throat> for me, the way to deal with it. Many times what I tell my students is as long as you have something to focus on, the fear will dissipate. And if you well, it's the other person. Yeah, it's, the, it's you. Like right now, it's you. I'm focusing on you. It's, it's the other person. 
you know, right. and they can see, you know, they can see it in your eyes when you're like, oh, you've, you've been pulled out. You're, you're going, your, your orbit is spinning out. And, and it's, it's that other individual that, that brings you back into, into the space. So, and then you're in that world, you know, earlier, yeah. you, were, earlier you were asking me about how do you deal with, cause I do a lot of now zoom coaching, all classes yes. are on zoom because of the pandemic. And after the pandemic, I'm sure I'll, bring back some live classes, but most of the classes that are online will stay online. And um, in fact, almost every one of them, but maybe one because they're all LA based. And I wanted to, cause you were talking about how do you create that electric kind of energy through the camera? This is one of the things that I focus on with actors because I discovered that some of my students now prefer um, auditioning on tape because they can penetrate that lens. But a lot of actors don't know how to do that. They, they don't know. I know you do, Joy. You do it. <laughs> do you see me going, well, I don't know. I, <laughs> I prefer you to be in the room. But... Organically, you do it intuitively, you know, and all your auditions are going to be on Zoom now, you know? I mean, the directors, yeah. the callbacks, yeah. everything. And I don't know if it's going to go back. That's the thing, because it, they don't have to rent a space. It, they don't have yeah. to physically yeah. be somewhere. And they can actually conduct everything from their office. It's more, it's certainly more economic. Yeah, you know, um, again, I, I, I'm feeling, I feel ambivalent about it. I like to be in that interpersonal, like I like that physicality of, of being in the same space. Um, I'm still wrestling with how to make this work. I'm, I'm still very fascinated about how you are able to, um, when you're in dialogue, when characters are in dialogue, how you, how you pull or tease out, or um, maybe that's the wrong way to describe it, how you, um, Get your students to focus on the energy through uh, through the camera to the other to their partner. Um, it's that it's that sharing of that energetics in a digitized space that um, you know. And you had said you've been doing this for uh, a fair amount of time, so you've got a really good handle on it. I'm, I think I need to come back to class with you. <laughs> come back. Um, I should. What, I should. I push. I really push them hard when it comes to connection and really like doing that give and take. I have an actress who I I'm just so proud of. She's in my Wednesday class, and she shot something that she worked on in class, and then she said because of the work in class, when she was in person with that, you know, in a, when she was shooting, it just brought it way up. So it's actually. Oh, yeah. Uh, the vibration of the experience of doing it online can heighten and give you an extra boost when you're on set, when you're in Yeah, I, that's, that's really such an interesting uh, observation regarding that because, you know, it's, it's, um, you're contained within this space. I mean, and again, when you're shooting film and television, you are engaged within this space, right? So, so I think, I think the the uh, evolution of teaching uh, the craft will be more um, more suited towards film and television. And, but and then when you're actually engaged in a person to person, you, you know, it, it just it, it's there. You know, I like, yeah, I, I love really how you put think, it. Yeah, yeah. I really honestly think joy after I've talked to also other coaches and friends of mine that they, uh, one, a couple of specific do not ever want to go back to a studio space because we get the close up and we get the opportunity to really um, see what's really going on behind the eyes through. Yeah. And you can't yeah. in a profile when you're doing scene work. That's true. Yeah, that's really interesting. That's really interesting. It 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 um uh mag it ma I don't want to say it doesn't magnify. It's like looking through a, a microscope for you. It really it's um the tool it's has amazing. become more. 
Yeah, much more refined for you. So you're you're much, and I think also I find with students like again, and I've always had problems with you know oh close up oh you've got an eighty mil lens on you oh crap okay I've got to be really really still and compress that energy, um, you know, and this this is really. Um, I think it's going to be super beneficial that the rep, the repetitive the repetition and the building of capacity for your students to when they then go on set they're they're not like me going oh my god I'm freaking out because I have to pull everything in they've done well, it your your amazing energy pulling everything in is I mean that's the other thing it's working on people's energy levels because a yeah. lot of actors just think that in real time moment that's enough energy and it's not there has yeah. to be an encapsulated internalized kind of inner combustion going on in you for anything to be powerful in the actual experience of watching so you know i can imagine pulling your energy in and it being a challenge because you're so powerful in your work well, I, you know, I think I think then this leads to the idea of, <clears throat> excuse me, connecting it with the thoughts. Like you, you have to have thoughts up here. You're not just, you know, saying your lines. Those thoughts have to be connected to the imagination, which you teach, and 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 the thoughts behind that imagine that the, the scenario. You know, I mean, you can't have dead eyes, um, and and so it's. Um, it's it's a much more uh, integrated um, and fulsome experience that 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 students really have to understand. It's not you're not just taking one piece and another piece. It's a it's a rhizomatic, you know, a rhizome, the 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 roots underneath a certain plant, like they branch out, right? But they're all connected, and then it 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 comes up through the body, and then but it's all, I don't know, maybe like a double helix. I, I, I'm, I'm getting these <laughs> visuals of that. I don't know. Well, I'm gonna have to look up what a double helix is because I don't remember now. Uh, your, your genes, your, it's all intertwined, oh, right? Yeah, it's yeah. just, right? So I don't well, know. Now I can't remember what I was gonna ask you because that's- I, Oh, I'm sorry. That. No, you're wonderful. <laughs> oh, this is what I wanna tell you. Um, after every class, it's recorded. So the actors all can watch oh. themselves afterwards. So that's the other amazing thing about Zooming is the, the lesson, the improvisation, and the scene work. Everything is recorded. So yeah. they get the visualization exercise with the technique. And then after yeah. the technique, the improv to work it out. And then right. they see themselves. So they see the class. They I, I think it helps them to process it in an, at another level. When it's one thing to be in the situation, experiencing it, but to also have that opportunity to step back and observe what worked and what has not worked. Um, and, and you can only do that, I think, in, the, uh, in having the opportunity to step back and watch over again, right? It's like, a, it's like replay, uh, you know, a, a television or film replay. Oh, that was really fascinating. I didn't know that I did that. And not that we want to uh, recapture or or um, reiterate what we've done, but just to be able to see um, the dynamics at work. It's a great, you just articulated it beautifully. So true. And um, I, I think it helps the actor improve to be able to visualize or see themselves. Plus it reinforces the notes. So, you know, totally. if I say something, then you can find it. Yeah. If I, you know, and or not, you know, it also yeah. checks my work. And um, if an actor is having challenges or is, is defensive, then they get to see that. So it's a very clean way to coach. It's so I, I mean, I really love it. I really love it. So we're all I love that responsible. I love the title, Clean Coaching. That's the, that's the title for you. <laughs> your next book or a chapter at least i love that yeah that's wonderful well what's your biggest advice to actors and you know i you, um oh. they can always look you up on um imdb um yeah. how come your imdb ranking spiked so much in march what was going on 
uh, because I'm, like I'm, yeah, well, a couple of things. A, my birthday's in March. So they, they, I think people always, and I got high. I was like, wow. And, and again, that's not the goal, <clears throat> but it is a business metric. It's a metric in which, you know, so yeah. unfortunately all of this social media stuff, which I think is, you know, can be incredibly unhealthy. Uh, but it is a piece of advice that I think they need to keep in mind that social media is a tool that should be utilized for their business practice and not to get caught up in their ego and their within who they are. Oh, crap. So and so. Why are they not following me? Why are my numbers not that high? I don't have high numbers, but I engage with the people who um who are engaging with me, and that's important. But I also know that this is this is really a tool and a metric for um, the accountants and the producers who are making work. I mean, you, you know, this is the day in which an episode costs five five million to twelve million dollars an episode to make. So <clears throat> the stakes are very high from an economic standpoint. You know, and, and we have to remember we are a very small piece of the puzzle within this within this broader picture. Um, so, you know, we have to we have to keep our our artistic lives healthy and safe and a little bit separated from the business side of of this um, sort of crazy thing that we're we're all trying to um, work towards. Uh, but I think. The idea that that we are storytellers, that we have a unique perspective based on life experiences, uh, I I think that you know keeping that awareness that you have a spark inside of yourself, um, and keeping that keeping that sacred, right? And I think that's one of the things that you had always I always felt that way in your classes. You know, everyone is. Uh, unique, and they bring something um, interesting to the table. That it, you know, you're allowed to you're allowed to create. You know, allowing yourself that freedom to create. And again, it's it's process. It's not pro from the creative standpoint. It's process, not product. And if you can stay in that headspace, then the business side of the product, you will serve that to the best of your ability that is such good advice i was talking about your your imdb ranking spiking and you went into <laughs> and by the way social media everything you said it's good advice keep it professional good. and have a very yeah. strong line you need a very strong line between the boundary of your acting and your personal life so do you want to say anything about that because i think that yeah. is how you survive this business Totally. I mean, I have have outside interests. You know that those outside interests are going to a. They're going to feed your creativity. They're going to feed your work. But you are you you are not just an actor. You're a full human being. You know, if all you do is is live, breathe, and eat. When am I going to get my next job? When am I going to get my next job? Oh, I got my next job, and it was all about this. You're not going to. Um, you're not going to be able to fulfill the. You're not going to be able to serve as a, as a creator. What about love for you? How does love fit in all that? You have to love and be passionate about what you do, right? I mean, if you're pernicious and tight, you know, and and you don't see. Hang on, just a minute. <clears throat> Thank you. I I love my family, but we. <laughs> They're in the room with me right now. So I have just lovingly told them to shut up. So, <laughs> so. Everything has to be every there's love is the foundation. It supports everything that you do, right? I I you know that's that's how your work is driven. It's driven by love. Even awesome. even when you yeah, I mean, and I'm going to just say this really quick. Even when you're playing the most reprehensible character, it's it has to be supported uh, somewhere in the realm of love. So, oh, there's something recent, but I can't talk about it. And there's a perfect perfect example. Um, Why don't you just talk about it? 
about it, but don't tell us what it is and we'll figure it out. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, I'm, I am in a very perilous situation. Uh, there is an individual who, um, who has uh, essentially been taken over by an entity and yet the individual that I know and love resides within the embodied uh, bad guy. Um, and I am desperately, re I want, and all of my instincts are to, um, to really kill or clobber this, this bad guy. But I know that uh, this dear individual actually resides within the, the embodied uh, bad guy. So it's, it is, it is um, trying to reach out to the, the behind the facade of this, this reprehensible character and trying to draw, um, draw them, out, draw the love, draw the, draw my friend back out, bring them home. And so that can only be done, even though um, really what you want to do is just, you know, destroy the other individual. You can't do that. It's that's not interesting. It's it is it is the um, the complexities of relationships. I mean, relationships are complex, and and it's never one thing or another, right? You, you know, it, it's. Uh, you may say you hate somebody, but you can say it with the with, you know, I just I hate you so much, but I love you so much, and and I don't want you to screw up. So you know, it's that it's that kind of element. I don't know. I, it I'm not a layer. It totally it's adds great. a layer. Okay. So the, it, the love, playing the love, finding the love, sitting on that, knowing that that's in the core of your you know, playing the love of character, but also playing the love of relationship offers way more layers in the work than if it wasn't there and depth. It's far more interesting, right? I mean, it's just, it's far more interesting. Um, Silence of the Lambs, right? When, uh, when Hopkins is talking to Jodie Foster, right? I mean, you want to talk about a really vile and, and, horrible character, but that interaction is, is, um, it's seductive, not in a sexual way. It's seductive in that, you know, he's really engaging her on such a deep level. I think that's a perfect example of, of playing the love when you have two characters that are really in, um, situations of polarity. Yeah, Jodie Foster has spoken about how there's so many ways she could have chosen to play it, but she decided to play it in an unexpected way. And I think it's very okay. clever and intelligent acting, both on both parts. Well, it's it, it's what you want to do as an actor. You want to make the unexpected or surprising choice, right? I mean, there are there are only so many stories, and and you know, so that's I think that's what an actor, that's what great actors do. They make the surprising choice so that when you are watching other people's work, when you are being critical in, in, a, in a positive way of how does that work? How does that not work? Very often it's, it's those um, masterful, masterful actors who are making the unexpected choices. And, and, I, and again, I think it comes from that that foundation of uh the support of love absolutely joy is there anything else you'd like to tell me or anything I'm, advice you want to give to actors right oh uh, well i i miss you i miss you and i adore you so much and this just reminds me how much i miss you um and what a caring just what a caring teacher you are and, and your students are so lucky to have you. I mean, I, again, I think uh, an understanding that this is a journey that takes time. It, it needs to have some breathing room. It, it doesn't happen. I mean, it can happen overnight, but staying power, uh, it, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon and, and finding your own personal strength 
pride and take the tools that you offer. And, and I think finding the most effective ways to utilize those tools, um, you know, again, it, it takes practice. So to be, to go easy on yourself, right? Don't be so hard on yourselves. It's, uh, you you got into this people i got into it because i love to i love to play right so don't don't remove that element that's that's the thing that you know you wake up and go yeah i'm i'm going to work today i'm so excited or i'm auditioning today i'm so excited to to have this opportunity i'm going to zoom class today and i'm so <laughs> excited i don't know what's going to happen so well, I always I'm I so love that about the, the element of life joy. We don't know what's going to happen from one moment to the next. And same with our acting and anything. We're we're on the brink of the future, one moment at a time. You, okay, so that's I think that's also key. One moment at a time. Yeah. Thank you so much for inviting me to come and chat with you. I I it's just been such a. Oh, just stay well and and just keep bringing your special spark. And and I'm gonna have to come back to class. I, I'm I'm excited to to sit in and and rejoin because that's that's another thing. It never ends. The learning never ends. So, well, it's always an honor to work with you, Joy. Oh. Seriously, an absolute pleasure and honor. You bring such a high, um, just such a high level of confidence and passion that you know it's off the charts i say thank you for that and and right back at you so anyway well i'm gonna say thank you so much for watching and sitting in on our um interview today it was such a pleasure and a joy to work with joy tanner um please follow her on instagram and watch her catch her imdb so you know when to see her next and when she'll be um we'll be able to see this undisclosed um, project that she's working on. Please do subscribe and like below. And thank you so much. If you have any comments, please do comment. And um, if you have any questions of joy, I'll make sure she answers them. Thank you so much.